Hello, hello. Welcome back to another planty video. My kettle is boiling by me, it's noisy. So today we're gonna be doing another plant chores video. I haven't done one in a while, so I figured that would be fun. I did make a list, so I'll show you guys the list. Also, if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. If you're into house plants, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. I would love to have you. Okay, so this is what I have come up with so far. We might do more, we might do less. Well, hopefully we'll be able to get through this. There's only five things on this list. So the first thing that I want to do is repot my Tenanthi, the one that's in pond. It's in a mason jar and it just needs a repot. It's growing like crazy, but there's tons of roots and tons of algae, which is the main reason that I want to repot it. So I really want to get that done. Um, I need to water my moss poles. Like, honestly, most of the moss poles in my house need to be watered. So we'll do that. Um, I have some plants inside my Millsbo tall that need to be watered. I also want to pot, ooh, I'm really excited about this one. I want to pot my Hoya and Syngonium cuttings. These are cuttings that I received from a trade um, through Patreon, actually. And it's my Hoya Crimson Princess and a pink Syngonium. Oh gosh, I don't even know the name for the the pink one that she sent me. Anyways, you guys will see it. Um, I'm pretty sure that the Hoya, I know that the Syngonium has tons of roots, but I'm pretty sure the Hoya is gonna be okay to pot up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I also need to make a soil mix for my friend Shannon. I'm gonna be going over and seeing her next week and she really needs to repot a bunch of her plants and she requested that I make her my custom soil mix. So we'll be doing that as well. I do need to stop at Walmart and get a bin um, so I can bring it over. So I think I'm gonna stop at Walmart a little bit later today. I am on a little bit of a time crunch right now. I just have a really busy day, weekend, week actually. There's just a lot going on. Um, so I'm gonna get as much of these done as I can right now, but this might go into tomorrow. So we shall see. Anyways, let's start with repotting the Tenanthi. Okay, so I'm gonna remove it from the vessel and then decide whether I'm just gonna clean everything out and repot it in here or whether I'm going to give it a new pot. Um, so let's just see. I feel like this is gonna be kind of hard to pull out. Wait, is there water in here? Because I don't wanna dump water everywhere. I think it's pretty dry actually. boy. can't believe how much this plant has grown, honestly. Oh man, it's like compact. Oh man, this is not great. Especially because it narrows a little bit, like to get it out of this part. Oh boy. Well, I'm up for a challenge today. I filmed a plant chores um, a few days ago, or I attempted to film a plant chores video for you guys, and it just was not going well. Um, yeah, I just wasn't happy with it. <laughs> and it was basically just me finding pests on all my plants, so it was just a little bit, a little bit depressing. So I abandoned that video and we're trying again today. Okay. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh man, it's literally not budging. Like it's not even budging a little bit. Oh man. Shoot, you can see like it's just, oh, my pawn is flying everywhere. You can see that the roots are literally just, it's just a big clump of roots and pawn entangled inside. Oh shoot, I just realized that my heater's on. Sorry if you could hear that. I can't film with my heater on because it's so noisy. Okay, that should be better. Oh my goodness, like what, how am I gonna be able to do this? How am I gonna be able to do this? Seriously, I feel like the easiest way is gonna be to break the glass, but how do I break a glass this like solid? 
I don't know. I'm gonna get a butter knife. We need to break out the tools here. Man. Just gonna try to kind of like pry. I don't know. This was not a good choice to put this plant in here. Don't do this, you guys. and try to loosen up as much as possible. I can see myself destroying roots, so this is not ideal, but obviously this is just not an ideal situation. Sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. You can't always save every root. If I can remove as much pawn as possible, then it will give me more wiggle room to be able to free this guy. Okay. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people watching that do not like this, but you know what? I am not a teacher. <laughs> I am just documenting my experience, and that's what this channel is. It's just sharing my experience, you know, 99% of the time. Oh, there we go. There's a lot coming out. Ooh. Okay. Okay. The clump of pond and roots is just too dense to be able to be pulled through the top. I didn't really consider that the mouth being just like slightly more narrow on this cup would be a big problem, but good to know for the future. Oh my goodness, she's gonna come, you guys. She's almost free. Oh, sorry, poor Tamanthe. You are one of my best plants, and this is how I treat you, you poor thing. Okay, she's coming, you guys. Oh, oh, there she is. Oh, she's free. Look at those roots. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. You poor thing shoved into that little mason jar. Oh man. Okay, so we've definitely lost some roots, but honestly not as bad as I was expecting. She still has a very robust root system here as you can see like look at that that is beautiful amazing okay 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 i feel like i want to take a picture of her roots be right back okay you guys so i decided that i'm going to be potting her into this plastic pot um honestly i wish that this was like a smidge bigger but this is all I have right now. So this is what we are going to be using. Um, and I honestly, I think it will work fine. Like, yeah. Oh my goodness. She'll need, she'll need to regrow some of her roots. Oh my goodness, the poor thing. Okay, so I'm gonna fill up this with a little bit of pawn. This is pawn that I already mixed. Um, and it's already been rinsed and everything, so I'm just gonna fill up this container a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna see how that fits. Well, that should be pretty good actually. I've just got to fill up the rest. I'm sure she'll bounce back. This is honestly like I know 
that these plants are in the prayer plant family so you'd think of them being more finicky but this is one of my toughest plants so i'm just going to completely top this off with pond if you can't see what i'm doing That looks pretty good. I like the plastic because you can like squish it and fill in all the gaps easily. Okay, that looks pretty good. Yeah, she'll definitely have room to root out in here. So I'm happy about that. You just wanna make sure that there's not any like large air pockets. Cause if there's big gaps, then you're just gonna be more at risk for rot and stuff like that. Okay, that should be pretty good boop, boop, boop. so that is how she is looking oh she looks way better in this too probably because it's not full of algae <laughs> so I am going to be topping her with some Osmo coat fertilizer let me go grab that actually Okay, so with Osmoco, you only need a little, little, little bit sticking to the bottom. I'm gonna put probably that much. This is around, probably less than a quarter of a teaspoon actually. And I'm just gonna sprinkle it along the top here. And that's it. Now she just needs to be watered. And I'm gonna see if I have a cover pot that's gonna work for her. Let's see if this one fits. Oh yeah, that's gonna work. Nice, okay. Uh, I'm gonna water her through. Okay, I'm going to pop her into this one and then I am just going to fill up with some water. Just doing it this way so that the water runs through that fertilizer. Okay, that should be fine. I'm just going to keep an eye to make sure that the pond is staying relatively moist and that's it. I'm going to be spraying her down uh, with a pest prevention probably this evening. Um, because I'm spraying all my plants down with pest prevention these days. So maybe I will include this in this plant chores video. Uh, we shall see. But anyways, here she is. She looks amazing. I love her so much. Tenanthe is so underrated, honestly. I would love to collect some more varieties. I also wanted to say that I am going to be reusing my pond. I reuse it just like I reuse everything else, my perlite and my sphagnum. I boil it just the same. So if you've seen my latest perlite prop box maintenance video, then I show how I boil the perlite in that video. Um, yeah, so I'm literally just gonna pick out the roots and I mean all of the like big roots that I can see I'm gonna pick out and then boil it and uh, I let it dry out and then I use it again. And I will be scrubbing out this algae covered mason jar and using it for a different plant in the future. Okay, so first thing on our list done. That was a good one, I really enjoyed that. Next, we need to moisten the moss poles. Okay, so I'm gonna start in my mills, but wide first to check on the poles in here. So, oh, is this gonna block? No, it's good. Okay, so I definitely am gonna need to top up these ones, I think, yeah, I do. So I always just use my squirt bottle. It's so handy for these self-watering. Holes. I know you're supposed to use like the um, the funnel thing, but I always just end up sticking this in here and it works fine. Get my Florida Beauty leaf. It's 
still changing color a little bit. For these self-watering poles, well actually for all moss poles, uh, ideally you want to be re-wetting them before they're completely dry. Um, because moss is hydrophobic when it's completely dry, so it takes quite a while for it to start actually absorbing the water again. Which can be kind of frustrating, but... Yeah, sometimes I'm not on top of it, I will be the first to admit. Okay, I'm gonna let that kind of absorb for a few minutes and I'm gonna take out the ones that need to be wet um, either by the shower or by my mister, my electric mister. These are pretty much all dry actually, to be honest with you. And some of these plants could probably use a water too. Okay, oh yeah, this one looks thirsty. You look a little bit, oh no, you're still moist. Uh oh. <laughs> That's not great. Hopefully you're not overwatered. Okay, so I'm gonna take these ones to the bathroom to uh, wet the moss poles, but I do not want to water this one just because, I don't know, I'm just a little worried about overwatering it because it does still feel kind of moist and I know it's been moist for a little while. Um, so what I'm gonna do is put a bag around it and try to protect the soil so that when I'm spraying down the moss pole, it's not like watering the plant at the same time. I actually got this idea from Jeff from Everything Plants. Um, I was just had his videos playing. I had some videos catch up on, so a bunch of videos on his channel were just playing. And there was one um, where he was watering one of his big plants, or what was he doing? Washing the leaves, maybe? I, I can't quite remember what he was doing, but he didn't want the plant to get watered. It must have been washing the leaves or something. Anyways, he tied a plastic around it like this, like a bag. So I'm going to try to do the same thing and we'll see how well it works, but it's better than nothing. And I thought that that was so genius and I don't know why I've never thought to do that before. That can kind of be an issue with moss poles, which is another reason why the self-watering ones are nice. Um, but yeah, okay. So that should help. <laughs> oh my goodness, okay. I'm gonna see if these ones need to be watered or not. This Milano, um, no, this is moist too. The pole is, well, yeah, it's pretty dry. Okay, I am gonna spray this down, but I'm not too worried about that one getting wet. And then this guy, are you thirsty? No, you're not thirsty. Well, no, you're not thirsty either, but I'm not too concerned. So I'll just spray these ones without covering them. I'm waiting for my Monstera Stondaliana here to give me new growth since I cut it up, but nothing yet. Anyways, keep the pole nice and moist for her. Okay, let's go to the bathtub. Okay, you guys, I hauled my ring light into here <laughs> and it still looks pretty dark, so I'm sorry if the light sucks. Um, but I'm just going to wet the poles with my little sprayer here. Oh my goodness, there's not a lot of room with all my filming equipment in my tiny bathroom. Oh man. Okay, let's just spray them. I guess I'll start with this guy. Okay, that should be good enough. Okay, so we'll see how well this worked. Oh boy, definitely water on the bag. Ooh, it looks pretty good. Okay, I'm pretty impressed with that. I can tell that a little bit water, a little bit of water just got in this spot, but other than that, 
it looks perfectly dry so that is awesome oh i'm loving this plant so much lately okay so i'm gonna put them back in I'm gonna check on these ones to see how they're feeling. I can definitely add some more water to the big one and probably to the smaller one too. Okay, I have another super dry one, and it is this gal right here. I think that both the pole and the plant need water, which is perfect because I'm just going to throw it in the shower in that case, so let's do that. That makes it simple. On a side note, look how pregnant she is. Can you see her bump? I am so excited for another new leaf. All right, so I'm literally just going to shower her. Okay, I'm just gonna let her hang out here for a few minutes and let's go see what's next on our list. Okay, so that is done. I think that that's all the moss poles that like urgently needed to be wet. Um, now what are thirsty plants in those both tall? Okay, let's take a look at who's thirsty in my cabinet. Okay, so I know the ones that are gonna be thirsty. I actually think I might need to water. Well, doesn't look bad. Um, this is going to need to be repotted soon, my El Chaco. Look at the small pot it's still in and how big it's growing. Oh my goodness. Uh, I know that my Linearis is probably going to be thirsty. Let's take that down. Look, it looks like it's climbing on the pegboard. Okay. Come with me, my child. Ooh! <gasps> oh! Oh no! Oh my gosh. Okay, pause. And this is exhibit A of why I need to take my Hoya Linearis out of there because it's getting way too long. I just don't want it to go downhill if I take it out of there, but um, obviously I'm gonna have to soon. It's getting caught to everything. Okay, sorry it's dark. I don't have my lights or anything set up here anymore, but I'm literally just gonna fill it, top it up with some soil. Doesn't really look like it was disturbed that much, which is good. Ugh, oh, that's so annoying, but I think it'll be fine. Okay. All good. All good. Sorry, little guy. My goodness. I just realized that another thing that's been on my list to do is repot and make a little moss pole for my philodendron splendid. What is that spot on it? I'm gonna have to take a closer look after. It's probably just from unfurling. Um, but yeah, I do need to do that. Should I do that in this video too? Maybe I will, maybe. Okay, you guys, so most of the plants in that cabinet are actually okay, but I do have a couple to water, and I really have to show you my Hoya Serpents. Okay, here she is, but look at this. Look at that tiny new growth right there. That is the cutest new growth I've ever seen. It's so small. Look at the size of it compared to my nail. It's so cute. I just posted a photo of it on Instagram because I was so shook. I was also noticing how much this plant matches my nails, like, looks so cute together. Anyways, okay, it does need a water, but I had to show you that new vine coming out. I have another new vine that's coming out here too. I'm so happy that this plant has been taking off. I repotted it in 
my most recent chatty repot with me um, video. Where's my watering can? So I'm gonna water these two Hoya and then uh, I have a couple of plants to water in the shower, my El Chaco and Viracosum. And then I need to head over to Hillary's because, um, whoop, because we're putting up her Christmas tree. So I'll have to pause, but I'm hoping that Walmart will be open when I come home, like on my way home. So I can stop there and get that bin so that we can mix Shannon's soil. But regardless, Time doesn't really matter on your end of things when you're watching this because it's all going to be edited together anyways. Okay, my Hoya Linearis. Yeah, this Linearis has just really taken off lately. Like, she is getting very, very long. I think that I would like to hang this on my bed frame maybe, but it doesn't get a ton of light. If you have a Hoya Linearis, let me know what type of light you grow it in because, yeah, I need to move it out of my cabinet, but I have to find a spot for it. And I've only grown it in quite high light, so will it be okay if I give it, like, medium light? I don't know. Let me know. My two babies. Look at them. Going in the tub. Okay, I actually have to be really careful when we water this El Chaco Red in here. Um because last time I turned on the shower and it blasted this plant and it like bent this leaf. Like this leaf was completely drooping down. I actually had to secure it up with some of my plant Velcro. Um, but since then it's fine. It didn't like snap or anything. Obviously I've taken the Velcro off and it's standing up, but I'm definitely gonna like support it as I spray it this time because, oh my goodness, can you imagine if I snap that off? That would be the worst. Maybe I'll do them one at a time to make that easier to support them. I have everybody safely back in there. There's the Baracosum, baby serpents up there, and then my wild Linearis back in there as well. Okay, so that is done. Ooh, we have the cuttings next. I'm so excited to pot those up. Okay, I'm going to take my pause right now. I need to get ready to head over to Hillary's. I might have time to stop at Walmart first. I don't know, we shall see. Anyways, I'll be back momentarily. Hello, just an update. It's 9 p.m. and I am just watering and spraying down plants in my bedroom. I'm trying to spray with every watering now. Um, I'm running out of my Dr. Doom stuff, so I'm just using my neem oil mixture. I'll show it to you. I posted on my Instagram stories how I made this the other day and I put it into a highlight. So if you go into my Instagram, you can find my little demo of how I made this, um, but if you're not on Instagram, then I'll put on the screen the ingredients of what's in here, but I do kind of mix it in a particular way. So maybe I will show that in a video or make a video about it, um, like a separate video, because I'm not making more right now, obviously, and I'm trying to finish this up so that I can get ready for bed. But um, yeah, I just did actually a whole bunch of plants and I put them back in my room and then I figured that I should just kind of update the plant chores video um but now i have both of my variegated monstera in the tub because i'm gonna spray them down so that is what i'm up to and then i'm gonna go and then i'm gonna get ready for bed and um we will finish the plant chores in the morning
Okay, you guys, so we are repotting my cuttings. It's the next morning, um, 9.37, and here we are, carrying on. So as you can see, I have a few here. Um, I have, I think, three Hoya Crimson Princess cuttings. Let's move this over. So this is my favorite one. I'm obsessed with this one. Look at how pretty that is. It used to be even more pink, but it fades down to a creamy color. So I have this one, not a ton of roots, but I'm not gonna pot it in a very big pot and it's gonna be with the others, so I think it'll be fine. This green one has a bit more substantial of a root system. I think that she said this came from the same plant, but this one just doesn't really have much variegation. I'm just gonna pot it up anyways. And then this one, there's definitely some variegation on this one very pretty and that's the roots on that guy and then we have my syngonium pink illusion which as you can see has some really good roots there this is what it looks like i've never had this type of syngonium before so i'm excited to grow this one okay so I'm going to be using this pot for the Hoya, this um, just small black plastic one. And then I'm going to be potting the Syngonium into this terracotta pot. And I have my soil mix behind me here. Hi, baby. Okay. Uh, let's do the Syngonium first. Add some potting mix and then boop. <laughs> it's gonna be so cute in there. I actually don't have many syngoniums, so it'll be fun to grow this one. I have a pink splash and I have an elbow, and I oh, and I have an erythrophyllum actually, so I do have a few. Uh, the one that I would like to get if I was gonna get another syngonium, actually, that's not true. There's a couple I would get. Um, I really like the when Landii or the Rayii or whatever the like velvety one is, um, I would love to grow that one. And also the Syngonium Macrophyllum uh, Frosted Heart. That one has been on my wish list for literally so long and I've just never really come across one. So I still don't have it, but yeah, I really love that one. Okay, there she is. <laughs> Look, so small. It's so cute. It's kind of crooked in the pot, but whatever. She has character, okay? Um, so yeah, I'll water this through once we're done, and then I'm just gonna keep an eye to make sure it doesn't stay like overly moist because it is just a small cutting in this whole pot. Um, I mean, it should be fine, honestly. I'm not worried about it. Syngonium are pretty hardy. Okay, next is the Hoya. Okay, I'm very excited to finally be growing Hoya Crimson Princess. I've wanted one for so long because I love my Crimson Queen so much. So yeah, finally have her. And I love that I got it through a trade, even though it's not like a rare or expensive Hoya or anything. I just love being able to get things through trades. Like I don't even care what the value is, you know? Oh no, what's going on here? Have the thrips gotten to you or has that leaf always looked like that? Honestly, don't know. I'm gonna spray these down tonight anyways. Has some weird damage on that leaf. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, so I'm just going to arrange them in here. Oh man, this is gonna be so pretty. This is gonna be so, so pretty. Okay, um be kind of tricky. that one I think over here this one 
Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think that that should be pretty good. Look at her. So pretty. I love the way that this looks. Maybe one day I'll grow Crimson Princess and Crimson Queen in the same pot too. That would be really gorgeous. Okay, I'm really happy with this. Let's take these both over to the sink and give them a good drink. Okay, I just thought that I was getting some cute clips of watering these plants through, but I finished and then I looked and my camera was literally not recording. So that's fun. Anyways, I just watered both of them through. They look so cute. Look at that. Okay, I'm very happy with both of these. Just gonna let them drain out for a couple minutes in here. And then I'm just gonna put them back where I had them before in my bedroom because I don't know, while they're adjusting to their new medium, I don't want to like drastically change up their conditions. Okay guys, one more thing down on our list. Uh, so the last thing that I wanted to do is make a soil mix for Shannon. So I need to go to Walmart, still haven't done that. Um, so why don't we just head there right now and grab that bin that I need quickly. My car is frozen. It is snowing. No raining, actually. It's like a really wet snow. Um, so I think while I'm at Walmart, I'm gonna pick up a shovel too because it's that time of year and I don't have one at this place. So yes, let's go. Okay, made it. Okay, you guys. <laughs> Hello. So updates. I went into Walmart and they had no bins that were the size that I was looking for. Like I like these flat, these longer flat bins for soil mixes. They had nothing that was gonna work. Um, and then I also got a text from my mom um, that we were gonna be visiting that day, so I had to leave town. And I was suddenly on a time crunch, so I didn't have time to stop at any other stores to look for a bin. So long story short, I've been out of town all day. I just got home and um, I am a problem solving woman. So what I'm gonna do is just make more of my soil mix for this bin and I'm gonna bring that bin with me when I go over to the mainland to visit Shannon tomorrow. And then at some point when I'm home and less busy, I will go out and buy myself a new bin. So I'm gonna give Shannon this bin. Um, it's only about half full though, so we're gonna add some more mixture to it. Um, I'm sorry that you're not gonna see me like make it from scratch, but you'll see everything that I put into it. And then I do actually have a video on my soil mix. I think it's a little bit different now though. So if you want me to make an updated video talking about it, let me know and I can definitely do that. Okay, I'm gonna go gather all of my supplies. Okay, so this is what my soil mix looks like, or my potting mix, I guess. Um, I would ideally like this to have more bark. I've been really leaning towards a really bark-heavy mix lately. I just think that that's like really what makes it extra chunky. And then I, okay, so I have the orchid bark and then coco coir, um, perlite, and pumice. So let's start with the coco coir. I have a giant bag of it here. It's honestly massive. So I'm just gonna scoop some out into here. So the more cocoa coir that you have in your mix, the more it's gonna retain moisture. So I do tweak this mix for um, certain plants, like or certain conditions or certain pots. If I know that the plant is going to need a little bit more water, then sometimes I will add just a little bit extra of coco par.
Okay, next I'm gonna go in with the orchid bark. I'm probably just gonna pour it. Actually, this bag isn't very heavy. I love the way that bark looks in a potting mix too. Like I just think a lot of bark makes it look so nice. Same with coconut husk. That makes it look really nice too, in my opinion. Ooh, this is already looking good. Looking good. I wonder if Shannon is an overwater or an underwater. I wanna say she's an underwater like me, but she might be an overwater, I don't know. I guess I'll find out when I see her plants tomorrow. Okay, um, I'm gonna want to have this filled up just a little bit more, so I'm gonna uh, put in a few extra scoops of coconut flour. Okay, let's add in some of our perlite as well. Now dry perlite is extremely dusty and it's not great to inhale. Um, so it's a good idea to wear a mask while you're doing it. Okay, now let's add some pumice. I have two sizes. I have these big ones, um, which I think she has some big plants, so whatever. I don't think I would buy the onesies big again. <laughs> And then I do have a smaller size as well. This was my problem, like the smaller size, I think it's called medium too. Yeah, hummus medium. They're tiny, this is like sand to me. And then the size above is massive, like, I just want a pumice in between that. It's so annoying. Okay, so this is the finished result. I think that it looks really good. I'm excited to bring this over to her and for her plant to be happy, healthy, and thriving, hopefully, with this mix. Ring light is reflecting in my glasses, okay. <laughs> All right, you guys, that brings us to the end of the video. Whoo! It took two days, but we got all the plant chores done, so I'm feeling good about that. I have such a crazy week, you guys, such a crazy week. Thank you so much for joining me for these plant chores. I really hope that you enjoyed. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you did. Also, leave me a comment below. I can't wait to chat with you, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Bye.